Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Distributions have always been divisive among people. Some of them seem to think that there should only be one Linux system. Some other people think that choice is really good and very nice. And distros have been the main word to define the Linux ecosystem for a long, long time. They shortchange a lot, like from the system settings, from the look and feel, from themes, from the default applications. There are tons of things that can be different from one distro to another, but are the differences still really meaningful or are they only skin deep? Let's take a look right after this. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For those who haven't heard about it, Skillshare is an online learning community which has plenty of courses on every single topic you could imagine. Whether you want to reinforce your skills in something you already know, learn something new for your job, or just dabble in a new hobby, Skillshare has something for everybody. Like, since we're talking about Linux, uh, you could try to become a Linux sysadmin, or just look at how to use the command line, or reinforce your knowledge of the Linux system architecture. There's plenty of stuff. I've been learning how to make better IRL videos, and even though I'm recording on a smartphone, I think I'm getting good results thanks to this uh, film lighting class that I've been taking. Now, Skillshare is simple and affordable to use. You can sign up for free, but if you want to delve deeper into your course or just use the offline videos, then you can subscribe for as little as $8 a month. If you want to give Skillshare a try, I left a link down in the description below. The first 500 subscribers to click on the link will get two free months of Skillshare Premium, so you can try to improve your creativity and learn something new. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so let's take a look at how distros can still be meaningful and relevant. And the first thing that really strikes as a difference is the theme and the look and feel. Ubuntu is really orange and purple, Manjaro is green, Fedora is blue, Elementary OS is grey with light touches of blue, and Solus is completely black and dark. This is the identity of the distro and its theming and its branding, and this is something that might seem really important at first. But then you realize you can reproduce this on any other distro just by downloading the theme, the icons, and applying it anywhere you want. Now the choice of desktop environment isn't really relevant either, since uh, distributions can basically install all desktop environments in the same place. So Ubuntu, you can install KDE even though you decided to install the GNOME version of Ubuntu. Even on Elementary OS, you could install Cinnamon or KDE. It's not an issue anymore, so picking a distro just for a desktop environment is not really relevant, and as such, distributions can't really differentiate themselves by using a specific DE. Even the customizations and the tweaks that they've applied to the desktop environment can be reproduced very easily on other distributions, so this doesn't bring a specific advantage and doesn't make the distro really interesting per se. Okay, so why the looks and the tweaks and the desktop environment of a specific distro might seem like its biggest difference, it's actually the less relevant, and this does not provide sufficient grounds to say that distros are still relevant. Now let's move on to packaging systems, and this is starting to be a little bit more interesting. Most distros adhere to one of the main uh, package distribution systems, like Debian packaging, RPM packaging, or something based on Arch. Uh, you also have some other variants, like Solus, which has its own packaging system, Manjaro, which derives off Arch, or even Gentoo, which is basically just install scripts, which compile the code for you. Now, package managers and the packaging system might make a distro more meaningful and matter more than you think. Because basically, users get used to a specific package format and to the specific tools that allow them to use them. I, for one, mostly used deb based distros, so mostly Ubuntu and Ubuntu derivatives and Debian. When I use an RPM based system, my skin crawls. I just don't like the tools, I don't like the system or the packaging format. This makes a big difference, because you don't only have the packaging system itself, you have the repositories, which is what the packaging system is plugged in. So what this means is not all distros are created equal in terms of software availability and the versions that they will ship. Manjaro and Arch have a lot more up-to-date software than what Ubuntu might offer or Fedora might offer. And as such, this is a big difference, and this might mean that distributions still matter at least in that regard. One might think that this is relevant, except that Flatpak and Snaps are here to change that. Yeah, if you start distributing all applications through centralized means like Snaps or Flatpaks, and that all distributions can use and adapt to these methods, this means that the availability of applications in the repos, the up-to-dateness of applications, don't matter anymore. And that also means that the packaging systems that the distros use are less and less relevant. So you could have a deb-based distribution if 
every single application you install is from Flatpak or Snap, you never use the default repository, so you don't even care what the packaging system is, and you could use the exact same applications on any other distro you would like. So why even have distros in this case? Now we can move on to hardware support, and this is no longer a differentiating factor. Most distributions that have released around the same date will support the exact same hardware. It is getting very rare to see one distribution supporting more hardware than another if their kernel version is the same. And basically they tend to be very, really standardized now. When the distribution releases, it basically uses the same kernel as another distribution that has released at the same period. So hardware support doesn't make a distribution matter more than one another. So what's left? Online help and communities. This, this is a big part. If you've used other distributions, you might have noticed that the communities are vastly different and the online available help is very different as well. For Arch, for example, you've got a gigantic wiki, which is super well documented. If you can't find what you want in that wiki, however, the community is generally very hostile to people that are beginners and don't really know exactly what they're doing. And this can be a huge pain in the butt for a newcomer in the Linux world. Online help and online communities are not created equal. And in that sense, distributions do matter. But one could argue that if everything else is exactly the same, which is hardware support, which is application availability, packaging systems, which don't matter anymore, look and feel that doesn't matter anymore, and desktop environments, which don't matter anymore as well, you could even think that any online help for any distribution might be applicable to every other distribution. So it's not really that big of an advantage. And we're reaching the end of the rope here. What's left for distributions to matter? And the last thing is the vision and the values. And this, my friends, is where it gets really different. Visions and values in distributions are super different. You've got, for example, Fedora, whose goal is to provide a vanilla GNOME system and a very open source friendly system. You don't get any binary blobs, any non-free software in the default repositories. You can install them, but by default, the ISO does not contain a single piece of driver software or binary blobs. Elementary OS has its own vision. They want to provide a super sleek, super simple desktop with a lot of polish, their own app distribution center, and basically their own way to reward developers. Their goal is to bring a simple desktop which users can use and use to pay developers a bit more, which is a problem in the open source community. If you haven't noticed, developers don't get much money. Manjaro wants to be a jack of all trades. You can use Manjaro with any DE, any theme, and you get a ton of default software. So you can just basically install it and you've got everything you need to start running. Linux from scratch just wants you to do everything by yourself. It's it might not even be considered a Linux distro by itself since it's just basically a guide that tells you how to compile everything from one system to another and get your own Linux distribution completely compiled from start to finish. These visions are really different and they do matter. You cannot standardize all these visions in one. You cannot have one distro that fits everybody. You cannot have one Linux system that fits everybody's needs. You have to have these visions to bring some focus to some specific aspects of the open source and the Linux community. Not everyone wants to use the same system and not everyone wants to use their system in the same way. This is why we need distributions and this is why distributions still matter. Sure, there are some distributions that don't have a specific vision. They just take Ubuntu, make a few tweaks, ship that with a different theme and they call it a day. And that's a hobby project and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm not saying that Linux distros aren't a problem in the Linux ecosystem. Beginners trying to choose their first distribution, their first Linux system, will get through a lot of pain. They'll get recommendations left and right. Some will say, use Arch is the best. Some will say, use Manjaro. Some will say, use Ubuntu, use Elementary OS, use Fedora. How do you make sense of all this? It is getting super complicated and super hard. And when people start recommending lightweight spin-offs that have two or three tweaks off of Ubuntu, it just doesn't make sense anymore. Sure, for an experienced user, picking a distribution among the gigantic amount of choices you get is a really fun experience because you know what you want, you know what you don't want, and you know what the difference can be. You can read the technical stuff and understand it and choose something that really suits you. But for a beginner, having so many choices is really a pain. So what's the conclusion of this video? Basically, the theme doesn't matter. The desktop environment doesn't matter anymore. The hardware support doesn't matter. 
the online communities and help still do play a role, the application availability and up-to-dateness is not really an issue or won't be soon with snaps and flat packs. So do distributions still matter? Yes, they matter through their vision and through their values. And this means that, yes, some Linux distributions matter and some probably don't as much. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you really did like the video, I have a Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.